The war against Russia just ignited the next big thing. Now, the Russia-Ukraine war has caused all types of problems across the world, from supply chains to energy shortages. Things as we've known them will never be the same. And while the Russia situation isn't the cause, it sure is the catalyst for massive change. It's the old Russian saying from Lenin that said, there are decades where nothing happens, and then there are days where decades happen. And that's what we're seeing right now. So in this video, I will break down the shift that was inevitable, but the situation with Russia kicked it into high gear. What this change is, how fast it's happening, where we can see it going, and what the huge opportunities are for us to take advantage of it. So let's go. All right, welcome back. Now, every problem has an opportunity. If you know where to look, you know, the proverbial silver lining. And so I know the world is bad and I know you might like watching a bunch of these fear porn videos. Unfortunately, they're getting lots of clicks on YouTube these days. Um, but it's important to understand what's going on and more importantly, what the angle is for us. Now, there's opportunity here, and of course, if we can make some money from that opportunity, then it helps us to navigate what's going on a little bit better. So let's talk about this massive problem that we have going on in the world and what we can do about it. Now, I've been talking about this big problem for over two years. Um, one of the first people talking about it, I made a video on YouTube uh, almost two years, over two years ago now, got about a million views, warning that an emergency or that, a, that an energy crisis was coming, and here we are living through this, and of course, I'm calling this a self-inflicted crisis. I was able to make that video two years ago, and I've made subsequent videos throughout the last two years because I saw the policies they were putting into place. They put the policies into place, now we're reaping the rewards, that's why it's self-inflicted. And basically we have decades of bad policies. What are those bad policies? Well, decades of horrible monetary policy where we've created massive inflation through printing way too much money. Um, massive, that leads to then massive amounts of malinvestment or bad investment, putting money into a bunch of places that will get no return, bad investments. And one of those happens to be in the energy industry. Then on top of it, they wanna put all this money into renewables to replace fossil fuels, but they don't work. So we have a big problem. As a matter of fact, let's watch this video so we can see just how bad it is. How much did the green investment give us? At the end of last year, um, overall fossil fuels represented 81% of overall energy consumption. 10 years ago, um, they were at 82. So. Those, all of that investment in renewables you're talking about, $3.8 trillion, let me repeat that, $3.8 trillion of investment in renewables moved fossil fuel consumption from 82 to 81% of the overall energy consumption. But you know, given the recent events and what's happened with the loss in gas and replacing it with coal, that number is likely above 82. So we spent $3.8 trillion, almost $4 trillion dollars on renewables, on wind and solar. But we've only brought the percentage of carbon or of carbon-based or fossil fuels from 82% to 81%. So we spent four trillion to bring it down 1%. But as he alluded to, that doesn't even really tell the whole story. And the reason why is because what's happened this year in 2022 hasn't quite been calculated yet. And what is that? Well, now, well, we'll get to that in a minute, but basically um, now we're seeing all the nations around the world going back to coal and even burning firewood, which is actually gonna probably take fossil fuels from the, we went from 82 to 81, maybe it pushes back up to 85. So then we spent 4 trillion, 3.8 trillion to actually make things worse. Now, if that's not bad enough, if you or I did that, of course, we'd be out of business, we'd be broke, we'd be bankrupt. But if you're the governments, you just double down. You just ask more. And as a matter of fact, the UN now says, let's, we want four to six trillion, hang on, hang on, hang on, per year. We want four to six trillion per year to address this. So never mind the four trillion that we spent and actually made things worse. Now we want four to six trillion per year to make things even way worse. Sounds pretty good to me, right? However, what we're witnessing is um, the volatility. I call it the blow off top. We're seeing both sides of this being pushed back and forth, and it's created a global crisis that we are living through right now. All right, now the problem 
is that reality eventually comes. I say it all the time. Eventually, reality will smack them in the face. They're going to have to wake up. You can ignore gravity temporarily, but eventually you're going to hit the ground, and that's exactly what's happening. And already we're seeing this happen in a really big way. We can see right here in this meme, they spent 500 billion euros on the renewables, and now they have to start mining coal again. But I thought that trillion, those trillions of dollars were supposed to get us away from coal. But now we're going back to coal. Now they have to mine coal again. So what happened? Well, real life kicked in as it is doing over the entire world. That's what I'm talking about. Reality finally kicked in. And what we can see is that it's gotten so bad, not only are they going back to coal, but now it says exploring the massive clean energy boondoggle of burning trees as carbon neutral. The shock of everyone with any semblance of common sense. Now, you guys have common sense, apparently these guys don't. The shock to anyone with at least a little bit of common sense that we are clear-cutting forests. We're literally clear-cutting forests in the United States and in Europe and burning the trees based on the idea that the process is somehow carbon neutral. So somehow cutting down our forests that the trees pull carbon out of the air. So we're going to cut them down so they don't pull carbon out. Plus all the diesel fuel that's used for the tractors and to clear cut them and to load the things and to move them to the shore and load them on, um, on freight liners and ship them across. Never mind all that. And then we don't have the trees to take the carbon out of the air. And then they take it over to Europe and they burn it. You ever seen what happens to firewood, what it does with the black smoke in the air? And somehow they call that carbon neutral. Now, as bad as that is, we can see it all over. Here's just a quick little search online. And you can see right here, firewood becomes a hot commodity in Europe. Greeks have to turn to firewood. Germany's statistics agency says that prices for firewood are up over 85% for firewood. We're literally going back to caveman style before the Industrial Revolution, which I guess is what they want. Uh, it says here, Europe, Germany, Poland, and the Czech Republic, they're all facing this, a firewood crisis. They've had to go backwards, not even back to coal, but back to firewood. We can see here in Germany, the, it says that Germany's decision to burn coal this winter is a hard pill to swallow, Climate Envoy says. Man, we were supposed to get rid of you know, fossil fuels, wood, coal, supposed to get rid of all that, oil, natural gas. We were supposed to be on this, you know, wind and solar. We spent trillions of dollars and it doesn't work. And now we have to go back to burning coal and firewood. It's a tough pill to swallow. Now, look, I put it here. They're acting like children, okay? Children say like, oh, I just want like a unicorn in my backyard and a pot of gold and like, yeah, that's like what children want. But as adults, we know that that's not reality. We understand the difference between what we want, like I want to fly like Superman, and what we can really have. Adults understand that. Children don't. It seems like we're being run by children. As a matter of fact, we are being run by children. And it wasn't until this child right here decided to tell the world that it's okay to keep its nuclear power on. This child right here had to tell the world Greta Thunberg says Germany should keep its nuclear plants open. So the, the, some of the political leaders in Germany have been saying, hey, we, let's not shut down the rest of our nuclear, let's keep it on. People in the streets are protesting, keep it on, keep it on, we're gonna freeze to death, keep it on. But they didn't wanna do it. Not until a child literally told them it's okay. That's the problem that we have right now. If you wanna know, we're being run by children. Now, we're seeing this tide shifting. We can see here Asia is going nuclear. We can see how many are being proposed, how many are being planned, and how many are in construction in Europe, in Middle East and Africa, Middle America, and in North America. Look how many are being planned. So, while some of the world's still trying to hang on to unicorns and rainbows, most of the world is moving into reality, maybe because Greta Thunberg told us it's okay, but either way, this is shifting right now. All right, now, the other thing that's really kicking this into high gear is that, if you haven't noticed, we're at war. We're in a lot of wars. We're in economic wars, we're in information wars, we're in a hot shooting war. Russia, Ukraine, the United States, right? You understand what's going on? And because of that, there's massive implications of this, one of which is, sanctions. Sanctions on Russia, and so we can't get any products that Russia produces, but it turns out that we need a lot of those products. And so, 
We're trying to work towards that, work against that. We have the National Defense Authorization Act, which basically mobilizes the economy like a wartime economy to get what we need. We can see here that the U.S. is developing uh, a domestic uranium strategy, says the Energy Secretary. She's not very smart. If you've ever listened to her in any interviews, she barely even knows anything. They asked her, how many barrels of oil does the United States use on a daily basis? She's like, uh, I don't know. Well, it's like, <laughs> you're the energy secretary. Anyway, it says here, the United States is working on supplying its own uranium for existing and advanced nuclear reactors. Now, this is the key piece. Remember, if we're trying to look for opportunities, we have to learn how to look at this information, understand second, third, fourth, fifth order thinking, but we have to look at the details. So here's the details. It's supplying its own, its own uranium for existing and advanced nuclear reactors. Why its own? Well, to reduce dependency on Russia. So we don't want to get uranium from Russia. We should get our own here in the United States. The United States relies on Russia and its allies, Kazakhstan, Ubisoftstan, for roughly half of the uranium powering its nuclear power plants. So half the uranium powering the United States power grid or the nuclear power grid, half of it comes from Russia and its allies. And that's a big problem because we want to sanction them, right? So it says that uh, Joe Biden has banned imports of Russian petroleum. We know we have diesel shortages, gas shortages because we ban Russian petroleum, but has not banned its uranium yet because we need it. So as much as we'd like to not get it from, turns out we need it. And so they want to immediately, using the National Defense Authorization Act, get United States companies to provide uranium. We can see here in August, Biden in August signed the Inflation Reduction Act. <sighs> of course, it has nothing to do with inflation, but what it does have something to do is uranium. It contains 700 million for producing a supply of enriched uranium that many advanced reactors being developed plan to use. The United States wants to be able to source its own fuel from ourselves. We don't want to get it from other people. We want to get it from ourselves as part of the national security. You understanding? And that's why we are developing a uranium strategy, Granholm told reporters. Making sure that we can fuel our own reactors as well as our partners. So the U.S. wants to be independent from Russia. We know that we need uranium from the United States and we're willing to spend big in order to do that. All right. So those are the things that lead to opportunities. Now we know this is coming. We know it's coming fast. Certainly not my favorite person in the world and I'm sure not yours either. Bill Gates is on the case. He's all over nuclear power right now. The US is fast tracking it. They're pushing permits through really fast. There's lots of nuclear reactors in planning right now to start popping up all of the United States. We're keeping them on in California. We shut two of three. They decided to keep the third one on because Greta Thunberg told them it's okay. Maybe he talked to Gavin Newsom, I don't know. Um, but we see reactors are being built all over the place. Bill Gates has partnered up with a new company called Terra Power. I believe they have six nuclear reactors in process of being built out, planning and being built right now. But the problem is all of these reactors online and all the ones coming along need U.S. production. But if you've been paying attention, what does the U.S. produce? The U.S. produces services, financial services and social media services, but we don't manufacture anything else. So the U.S. needs U.S. production, but we don't have any. Now we need a lot of it. Now you may not know a lot about the U.S. nuclear power situation, but as a matter of fact, the USA is the world's largest producer of nuclear power. We're the largest producer, uh, accounting for more than 30% of global nuclear power. Now, it says that uh, uh, more, uh, more units are coming online soon. There's 16 licensed applications um, to build 24 new reactors. 24 new reactors are coming online. And we're already the world's largest producer, but now we need U.S. production. So this peaked out here back in the 90s, then it peaked again here about 2013. And since 2013, we have just dwindled down. We're not producing any uranium. So we're already the largest um, nuclear power in the world. We have 26 new plants coming on. We have Bill Gates and his new reactors coming online. We need to source U.S. uranium because per the wartime efforts of the Biden administration, it needs to come from the United States, but we don't have any. We're not producing it. So what are we going to do? 
We need to produce it really quick. Okay, so therein lies an opportunity. Now, if you just spend a little bit of time researching uranium, you're going to find out that there's not very many US-based companies. I showed you the production chart. They are down the tube. So I want to show you one that's in the United States, and it's a very interesting way to play. As a matter of fact, it's the only company that has this way to play it. Now, I do want to let you know, full disclaimer, this is a promo video. I am promote, promoting this company. I'm not telling you to buy it. Uh, it's for educational purposes, but this is a company I'm looking at and I think it's worth you taking a look at it at least so you can go build your education and you can go find other companies that you think might fill this in. But let's take a look at this because, as I said, there's not many U.S. companies providing uranium and especially not this, play, this way. So I'm talking about Uranium Royalty Corporation. Now this middle word here, royalty, is the key piece I want to dig in. Uranium Royalty Corporation, it is the first publicly traded uranium royalty company. I'm going to explain to you what a royalty company is and why I like that. But they have some of the best assets in all of North America right now. And we can see that they have royalties on some of the very best companies. So I'll explain to you more what a royalty is, but basically it's guaranteed income off of other companies. You buy it up front and you get more of it in the back. Now this is on some of the very best company um, mines like Kamiko Corporation Mines. Uh, we have uh, another Kamiko company, Kamiko, Roy, Rio Tento, uh, Laramide. We have some of the very best Uranium Energy Corp. We've talked about them. We have, we have royalties on all of these companies, guaranteed profits, if you will. And they have it on some of the other best assets in the world. As a matter of fact, this one's called the MacArthur River Royalty. It's a 1% royalty. It's the world's largest high-grade uranium mine the world's largest high-grade uranium mine. Another one of their assets that they have is called the Cigar Lake, which is in the top mining jurisdictions in the world. It's basically the Saudi Arabia of uranium, and they have um, royalties in there as well. On top of that, they're sitting on $75 million in physical uranium because they had so much money to deploy, and we were in a bear market, and so rather than deploying it into a bear market, they said, let's just buy the raw uranium at such a deep discount, and they've made a ton of money, and that's sitting on the books. Now, why a royalty? I want to explain this to you for a minute. Now, you know that I like gold and silver. I like gold and silver miners. The reason why I like gold and silver miners is because the multiple they get, right? If I have an ounce of gold and it goes up by 200 bucks, cool. But if I'm a miner that has 100 million ounces and it goes up by 200 bucks, that's really cool. The problem is that gold and silver miners have been getting absolutely hammered lately. And the reason why is inflation. So the price of gold has been going down, but their expenses have been going up. Diesel fuel, for example, to drill the holes in the ground and get the tractors moving, uh, their labor, all of their costs have gone up, but their gold price has gone down. They've gotten completely hammered. When you have declining revenue, but you have increasing costs. But what royalties do is they fix that. They have fixed profit. So royalty is guaranteed to make a certain amount of profit regardless of what the expenses are. Now, if you don't know what a royalty is, let's hear it from my good buddy over here, Mr. Wonderful Kevin O'Leary, in his uh, famous show, The Shark Tank. Let's hear a clip from him. Here's an offer for you. I'm known for being creative with my offers. I teach the sharks how to structure things. So, $350,000, <laughs> I give you that. Um, because you brought up the word royalty, I didn't, you did. I like royalties because that's how I can get my capital back. So I'll give you the $350,000. I want a $3 royalty on the Vabroom. All right, so you understand how this works. If you watch Shark Tank at all, I used to watch it with my kids all the time. We loved it. Then you know that is his favorite method. He always wants to get a royalty because he's guaranteed that profit, that return. Now we see this all, all over the place in the gold and, and the silver industry, but this is the only publicly traded uranium royalty company and you have a fixed supply and profit. And it's no wonder that some of the biggest names in the uh, commodities, in the precious mining spaces are on board. The key shareholders, Uranium Energy Corporation, Altius Resources, one of the big companies, Mega Uranium, Marin Katusa, legendary resource investor. We got uh, Rick Rule, I mean, the man, the myth, the legend, Sprott Global. Some of the biggest names in the resource sector are in this because, of course, they love royalties too. And there's only one way to get royalties in the uranium space. Now, where is all this going? 
all right? I've already built up the case. There is uh, reality smacking people in the face. There is no way to move forward without uranium. I mean, uh, there's no way to move forward. We can go backward to the dark ages, sure. We can go back to burning firewood, but there's no way to move forward without going to uranium. There's no way. And it's inevitable and it's happening. We're, we're literally watching it happen. So where is this going? Well, right now the company has about a $225 million market cap. That's the valuation of the company. If we adjust that, we know that they have $75 million of uranium on the books. And as the price of uranium goes up, that's going to go up in value. We also know that they have about $58 million in cash just sitting there in the bank, ready to be put at any time. So if we take the $225 million minus $75 in assets, minus $58 in cash, we end up with about a $90 million adjusted valuation of the company. Now, we know that they have I think about 15 different royalties on the very best assets that are out there, including two of the best, as I said, MacArthur and Cigar Lake. Now, so far, because the price of uranium has been depressed, it's been in a bear market and so forth, this is all new developments. This new Biden administration stuff is brand new. And so now they're starting to ramp this up. The MacArthur project is coming online right now, like probably in the next 60 days, 90 days, it will come online and will start producing revenue into the company. Cigar Lake should be online in the first half of 2023. When these two projects start pumping in revenue, the price of the, uh, the stock should be going up really, really quickly. We can see, as I said, nuclear power is inevitable. If we look at the, how clean um, energy is, we can see the life cycle carbon emissions from selected electricity supply technologies. So coal right here is definitely the dirtiest. We have gas, we have biomass, we have solar right here, geothermal, hydropower, wind, and look at nuclear is even better than wind, solar, or anything else. It's the future. There's no way around it. It all just comes down to how you want to play it. The U.S. is stepping it up big time, already the leader in nuclear, stepping up big time and want to get it all from the U.S. So how are you going to get it? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments down below. As always, give me a thumbs up on this video if you like it. If you don't, you can give me a thumbs down. That's okay, but at least tell me in the comments why. And that's what I got. To your success, I'm out.